In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Some of you might be familiar with a Netflix cooking competition. The name of this show is called Is It Cake? And this is exactly what it sounds like. In this show, talented bakers and pastry chefs compete with one another to produce confections that can pass for inanimate objects. I'm not exactly sure what itch this show is designed to scratch, but there is a weird kind of thrill when you see the host wielding a butcher knife approach things like a bowling ball or a rubber ducky or a Big Mac or a sack full of money only to have him cut into that object and reveal that it is actually made of cake. If you watch enough episodes of this show in a row, which is what Netflix's bingeable content is meant to get you to do, you can come away with all kinds of existential questions like, what even is cake? When I was reading through the scriptures for this morning, I kind of had a similar reaction, but with bread substituted for cake. According to these readings, what even is bread? Is bread a fine, flaky substance that falls from the sky and gathers on the ground in the morning like frost in the form of manna, like in our story from Exodus? Is bread just bread? Is it a wheat-based baked good that requires time and attention, kneading and rising and resting and baking before it becomes an everyday staple, something capable of being broken and shared, passed around with generosity so that it multiplies to sustain a whole crowd? Is bread just a metaphor? Is Jesus bread? And if Jesus is bread, what on earth does that mean? The many different perspectives that we are offered in scripture as to what bread is, I think lead us just to the answer, yes. Bread is both manna, meal, and metaphor. An actual physical staple of a diet that is meant to sustain life and promote human flourishing. And it is a complex theological claim about our absolute dependence upon God as the one true sustainer of life. Let's start with Exodus and manna, that bread that falls from heaven. God the liberator has heard the cries of pain from his people. He has worked through Moses, his human companion and helper, to deliver these people away from their captors and out into the wilderness to freedom. But you see, freedom comes with grave uncertainty. The Israelites suffered grievously under slavery, but this is not forefront on their minds as they wander in arid desert with their bellies rumbling. At least as slaves, they were fed properly. At least in bondage, they knew where their daily bread would come from. It's not clear to me in the context of this story whether the Israelites are actually hungry or whether they're just making themselves sick with worry, constantly wondering where their daily bread is going to come from. Either way, God pr provides a solution to both of these possibilities with manna. Every morning, except for the morning of the Sabbath, manna, which is bread from heaven, falls down from the sky and gathers in clumps on the earth. And the Israelites are instructed only to gather enough manna to last them for the day. If they try to hoard it, if they try to save it, if they try to build up a store to use for later, it becomes infested with maggots and it rots. So God makes provisions for the physical sustenance of his people. God removes this desperate uncertainty that is preventing his people's flourishing. The Israelites will have enough daily food to, make, to meet their basic needs, but no more than that. 
Now Jesus too, in the story that immediately precedes our reading from John, offers people real bread, actual tangible sustenance. A huge crowd has gathered to hear Jesus' teaching, and they are growing increasingly hungry. Now, whether the miracle in this story is a magic trick of multiplication, or whether it is a miracle of generosity, where strangers share what little they have so that it multiplies and feeds a multitude, I don't think the technicalities of how it works are actually the point. I think the point is that when God's people need actual physical sustenance, God provides it. Bread can't just be a metaphor if folks are actually hungry. So bread is bread, except when it isn't. Our passage from John begins with a group of people looking for leftovers. They were among the crowd of 5,000 that Jesus had fed with the loaves and the fish, but when they wake up, they find that Jesus and his disciples have gone. And so they decide to seek out this magical bread man, the man who can bring abundance out of just a few meager provisions. At least, this is how Jesus characterizes these folks when they finally track him down on the other side of the lake. Jesus practically scoffs at them you're just here because you got to eat your fill of bread. Rather than looking for more earthly bread, which will rot, you should concern yourselves with heavenly bread, which will never leave you hungry. So here, bread is more than just bread. These hangers-on want to see Jesus use his magic again so they can store up for themselves manna for days, but Jesus challenges them to think beyond their immediate physical needs. Bread will fill up your belly for a time, but it is only God who can truly satisfy you, only God who can meet your every need and prepare you for a life of abundance beyond anything you could ask or imagine. In the Lord's Prayer, which we recite at every celebration of the Eucharist, we ask God to give us our daily bread. And I confess that I have been supremely fortunate never in my life to have had to wonder where my daily bread would come from. I imagine this is probably true for most of us here this morning. So the first thing I want to do is just remind us that we're a lucky minority in the history of the world. There are people in our country, even in our city, who do not know where their daily bread will come from, who do not have resources to give their kids breakfasts and lunches during the summer when school is not in session. We should not forget that while bread is a metaphor for many of us, it is absolutely not a metaphor for everyone. God cares for the physical sustenance and well-being of all of his children, and God relies on God's helpers, Moses, the disciples, bystanders who have extra bread in their sacks. God needs these helpers to help God comfort and care for the immediate needs of all of God's people. So for many, many people, bread is bread, and it is up to us, particularly those of us with fortune and means for whom bread can just be a metaphor to put that fortune and means to use, just like Moses did when he helped his people, just as the disciples and the members of the crowd did. We are not to hoard our manna because ultimately it will rot. We are called to share what we have, our time, our talents, our money, and even sometimes our literal food with those whose daily needs are not being met. Now, well, this is absolutely not a parallel experience to being hungry. It is still possible to receive your fill of daily bread 
and still go to bed hungry at night, still looking for sustenance, still looking for hope and companionship and joy and community. And this is what Jesus means when he says that he is our living bread. Our gospel makes the radically countercultural claim that we do not live by bread alone. That at the end of the day, when we have reached the limits of where our money and our talent and our brains and our beauty and our charm and our resources can take us, we still fundamentally need something. No matter how much bread we cram in our mouths, we still need God. And God is not a magic vending machine, which is how this crowd of hangers-on is treating Jesus. And God is also not a tyrannical accountant weighing our souls on a balanced scale between our good deeds and our bad. God is who and what each and every one of us was made for. God is our companion on our way and the end towards which each of us individually is journeying. God absolutely cares about our physical health, our safety, our well-being. But these are not ends in themselves. God cares for our lives because we were gloriously made to live in relationship with God and with each other. If you, like me, are lucky enough that your daily bread is a metaphor, you might want to start thinking about other ways in which you are still hungry. Because it's that drive for our daily sustenance, our comfort, our home, that we find the nourishment that will ultimately fulfill us. As St. Augustine famously prayed, our souls will be eternally restless until finally they rest in God. Amen.